Welcome, welcome, welcome again. Mara Michelle here. Today's topic The Fanatical Mind, part number four. Part number four. We've been looking at this chapter, I think, now, so for a little time, and uh, we are gonna move on to part number four. Possibly, it might be like chapter 4, as I mentioned before. It might go up to maybe 6 parts. We'll see. Only God knows. But, let's get right into it right now. Okay. So, we're going to begin with fanaticism hard to quench. Yes. Once you're a fan... You're more likely going to be a fan for life. Fanaticism, once started and left unchecked, is as hard to quench as a fire which has obtained hold of a building. And when you guys hear of the of a fire taking hold of a building, you should be thinking of September 11. That's a prime example. Those who have entered into a sustained, no, those, those who have entered into and sustained this fanaticism, meaning holy flesh, might far better be engaged in secular labor for by their inconsistent course of action, they are dishonoring the Lord and imperiling His people. That is also speaking to me. Many such movements will arise at this time when the Lord's work should stand elevated, pure, unadulterated, unadulterated, with superstition and fables. We need to be on our guard to maintain a close connection with Christ, that we be not deceived by Satan's devices. This is from the book Selected Messages, uh, book 2, page 35. And so, well, I mean, when I used to be a fan, and I, I, I played soccer, I, I still play soccer, but uh, I don't really follow any team anymore. When I used to play soccer, when I used to be a fan of my favorite team back in the day, even when they were, I would say, um, not good, I would still uphold them. That's what most fans do. Uh, but when it comes to spiritual life, spiritual life, and you become a fan, not a fan, but a fanatic, most likely meaning you way you're making things like like the Pharisees basically yes those were fanatics basically what well, what happens is you you are holding God's work in a sense so it would have been better if you had gone to into the secular world than into the um, religious world. That's basically what it boils down to. But, you know what? Let's move on. Let's move on. Find drawn theories that will fear, or that, no. Yes. Find drawn theories that fill the mind. Satan is working in many ways that the very men who ought to preach the message may be occupied with fine-drawn theories which he will cause to appear of such magnitude and importance as to fill the whole mind. And while they think they are making wonderful strides in experience, 
they are analyzing a few ideas and their influence is injured and tells but little on the Lord's side. Let every minister make earnest efforts to ascertain what is the man of Christ. There are those who pick out from the Word of God and also from the testimonies detached paragraphs or sentences that may be interpreted to suit their ideas and they dwell upon these and build themselves up in their own positions when God is not leading them. Now, all this pleases the enemy. Well, of course, if you are taking, if you are taking God's word out of context, you are taking the message from the messenger out of context to make your own ideas, then why would Satan not be happy? It suits him perfectly. That's exactly what he wants, is to lead people astray. We should not need, needlessly take a course that will make differences or cause dissension. We should not give the impression that if our particular ideas are not followed, it is because the minister or ministers are lacking in comprehension. I guess that's a big idea now. You know how many people like to be heard when they are, um, I, I sometimes do that. When I, sometimes when I do that is when I know what, what actually it means and people are not listening and I'm like, ah, oh, I wish they could just listen this time. I made a video about, um, Matthew 24. The one shall be taken and the other one left. And like the church, I mean, okay, I mean, I guess the, the my church, which is the Avenue, the Seventh Avenue Church, maybe in the US, they are preaching it in the wrong way, I guess. Because I didn't learn that in my, in my home country. I learned this. I learned one thing when I was growing up in my country. And then when I came here in the US, I learned that same part in a totally opposite. So I'm like, which one is true or not? So, of course, as a good student, what, what, what do you do? You go study for yourself. And so, I stuck with what I learned when I was back in my, old, my, my country before I came here because they are preaching it here, um, not what the Bible is teaching, but because they want to be against the so-called... Um, Secret rapture. That's why. And so they twist the Bible so they can go against the secret rapture. When in fact, those that interpret the Bible according to what the Bible actually preaches, they are right. Now, okay, they're not right when it comes to the secret rapture, but they are right with that left behind thing. I guess that's how they call it, left behind thing. But that, but actually, it's kind of funny that the Bible actually preaches those that are left. Basically, they are left behind in a sense. If you study for yourself, you're gonna find exactly that. But people might not wanna do that, so that's another story for later on. Okay, we're almost done with that one. There are in the lessons of Christ subjects in abundance that you can speak upon and mysteries which neither you nor your hearers can understand or explain might better be left alone. Exactly. So, yeah, if you are not skilled in explaining, you maybe you should not go that route. Do something that you are better at. That's one thing I actually did in my life. Uh, I wasn't ever really good at mm, playing music. I did learn some instrument, but I never learned to play in public or sing in public. So I didn't really do that. But what I did do is speaking in public because that's what I learned from a very young age. Do many things. So all that I did is I kept 
doing what I can to be better at what I already learned, what I was good at. And basically that's what I have to do. Um, so, but some people, some people are actually not want because they want to do something that is not for them. I don't know why, but I guess to each his own. No, anyways, let's keep on going. Give the Lord Jesus himself, and Christ himself, room to teach. Let him, by the influence of his spirit, open to the understanding the wonderful plan of salvation. And so, let me see if I can finish right here. Wow, that one is long. And it's pretty long though. Uh, so, okay, I'm going to finish right here. Um, I'm going to try to keep it below 15 minutes now because I'm going to try to keep it below 15 minutes instead. So, when we start with part 5, we'll start with turn away from the negative side, um, counsel to a minister. That's another book as well. So, what did we do? What, what did we learn today? Uh, we, we, we find out that Satan is always looking for people to misconstrue text from the Bible and from the spirit of prophecy to suit his purpose because that way more people can be lost. So, so what are we going to do now? It is time for us to learn to appreciate what we have that we are good at. I am good at, I guess, teaching. Uh, honestly, I'm not trying to be, but um, for some reason, I'm good at teaching. That's why I used to be a Sabbath school director, and I would do the lesson here all the time. Um, for adult, for uh, people who spoke Spanish, for young young adults as well as high school college students yes so that actually is one thing i'm good at so i keep get, trying to get better at it but we should do our best to get better at what we already have our strength in so that's it for today that was Mother michelle i hope to see you guys again but if i don't see you guys again I hope to see you guys when Jesus comes the second time. Until then, bye for now. Mother out.